All right, guys, go ahead and open up PG Admin. And before we get started, I'm going to do something a little unusual. I'm going to delete everything from our post table. Now, when it comes to creating an extra column and creating a foreign key, that's not a requirement. You know, you don't need to do that in a production database. I'm just going to delete everything just to keep, just to make things a little bit more simple moving forward. Um, because if we don't delete anything, when you start to add columns that especially have a not null constraint, uh, we have to do a little magic to kind of get that to work. And I want to keep things as simple as possible. So what we're going to do is we're just going to delete everything from the post table just to make things as simple as possible. So we could just say delete from posts and that should delete everything and everything's gone. And we should be pretty much good to go to actually start setting up our foreign key. So right click on your post table and then click on properties. And the great part about these foreign keys is that, you know, we just have to do this on the post table because it's a one to many relationship. There is nothing in the users table that we have to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to column. And then we're going to add a new column. And I'm going to call this user underscore ID. And you can once again name this anything you want. The actual name doesn't have to make sense. But, uh, you know, I think naming it user underscore ID makes sense because this is a column that's going to represent the ID of the user that created our post. The data type. Now, this is important because the data type of this column needs to match whatever the uh, data type is of the ID column. Uh, from the users table. So we always set the ID up to be integer, so you want to match this. However, keep in mind that it, sometimes when you're working with databases, it might be uh, some other data type, right? If you use big int, you definitely want to make sure that this is also a big int. If you use a small int, make sure this is a small int. If you use UUIDs, make sure that this is a UUID as well. You just want to match up with whatever that column is in that respective table. Uh, now, we have uh, the options to set this as not null. So right now, we can create a post with a null user, which means there's no user that created this post. Uh, and if, and to figure out if you should set this to be not null, it just depends on how you want to set up your application. Should the database allow you to have a post without a user? It's up to you to decide. I'm going to say no for now. I'm going to say not null because I don't want to be able to create a post without a user. It doesn't make sense. All right. And then after that, what we can do is we have to set up our foreign key constraint. So let's go to constraints and then we want to go under foreign key. So this is where we set up that magical connection between the two tables. Hit the plus sign and then give this foreign key a name. The name of the foreign key doesn't matter, right? It doesn't impact the functionality of anything. This is more just for you as a user to be able to read it a little bit more clearly when you see it on the CLI. But there's a standard convention uh, that we like to use when it comes to naming our foreign keys. What we like to do is we like to take the table that we're working on. So it's going to be posts. And then we do underscore, then the table that we want to set a foreign key to. So it's going to be users. And then we just do underscore F key. Once again, this is just nothing more than a, a name to describe the foreign key. It's not actually doing anything at the moment. To actually set up the logic of the foreign key, we have to open this up and we have to go under columns. And so this is how we actually set up the relationship. So here we're saying, what is the name of the local column? Uh, the column in our posts uh, table. Well, we created our brand new user underscore ID. Then it's going to reference what table? Well, we know it's going to reference the users table. So we select the users table. And then what column from the users table is it going to reference? Well, it's going to reference the ID column of the user table. And then at that point, you just hit plus. It gets added up here. And before we move on, there's one last thing I want to cover because we're almost done, we have to go under actions. And because we're setting this relationship up between two different tables, we have to figure out, you know, what happens when uh, a user gets deleted, right? Because right now, a post is going to have the ID of the user that created it. What if we delete that user? What do we do? So if you go to the on delete section, we have a couple of different options. Uh, one of the more common ones is cascade. And so what cascade does is, if I, let's say, if I have a couple posts that were created by a user with an ID of seven, if I delete that user, then Postgres will automatically go into my post table and delete any posts that were created by that user. And so that's one option. That's what I'm going to use. However, we have other options as well. We can uh, set it to the default value of the column. So if we give the column a default value, uh, maybe we create like a, like a random ID of zero or something, then it's going to assign all of those posts that were created by the deleted user to zero. We can set it to null. So if we did set null, then it's just going to set the user ID column to null if that user gets deleted. 
Keep in mind, if you want to be able to use set null, then you have to go back to columns and make sure this is not set to uh, allow you to set it to null. So we'd have to set it to no, or then it would throw an error when you try to delete someone. And then there's a few other options, but uh, we're going to stick to cascade. And then keep in mind, you can do the same thing with uh, uh, on update. So what actions do you want to perform when you update a specific user in that case? Um, but we'll leave it as no action for now. Uh, I just mainly care about the on delete. At this point, that's all you have to do for foreign keys. You just specify the column of the other table it should point to, and you're good to go. We'll hit save. And then we're going to go under posts. Well, actually, before we do that, we're going to go under users. We're going to view all rows. And let me clear out some of these. There's too many windows open, right? And these columns got a little squished. Um, but right now I have three users. Uh, it's got an ID of 17, 18, 19. So go ahead and remember that. Obviously, your database is going to be different. So uh, just remember the IDs of a couple users. And what we're going to do is we're going to go under our posts. And we're going to view edit. And so right now I have no posts because I deleted everything. So I'm going to create a brand new post and I'll just call this, uh, this is my first post. And the content is just going to be some random content. I'll leave published blank um, because we've got a default value. And then right now, if you take a look, we've got this new user ID column. So if I try to save a post right now, take a look at what happens. It gives me an error. It says null value in column user ID vol um, violates not null constraint. So because we said that user ID cannot be null, we have to provide a user ID. So let's give it an ID. And if we go back to users, I can see that there's going to be, I can use 17, 18, or 19. So whatever user created this, I'll just say John created this. So we'll grab an ID of 17. And I'll say that this is going to be an ID of 17. And then if we save this, look at that. We now have a relationship between the users table and the post table. Let's create another entry. I'll call this second post. And it's going to have some random content. And I'll say that this was created by the user with an ID of 18. And that should work just fine. Now, what I'm going to do now is uh, what happens if I create a post and I give it an ID of a user that doesn't exist? So I have IDs of 17, 18, 19. What happens if I set the user ID column to be a value of 20? Well, let's, let's try that out. So I'll just call this third post. And then we'll set the content to be something random. And if I set this to 20, let's see what happens. If I hit save, look at this. Insert or update on table post violates foreign key constraint. There's no user with an ID of 20, right? So that doesn't exist in that table, so it's going to throw an error. So uh, that's the magic behind foreign keys, that it's going to check to make sure that that user actually exists. And so this isn't going to work, so we'll just set this to 17 as well. No, save that. Right? And that's it, guys. And when it comes to, you know, kind of querying these users, right, let's uh, go back to our database and let's just set up a query. Now, let's say I want to get all of the posts created by user 17. Well, we can do select star from posts where, and now instead of, you know, searching for based off ID, we grab the user ID column and we set that equal to 17. So this is going to get me all of the posts that were created by user 17. I run that, you can see that this got the two posts from user 17. And then if I change this to 18, we're going to get the one post created by user 18. So from a SQL perspective, right, nothing's really changed. You just specify what column you want to match on and then provide a condition. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to delete this user. So I'm going to go and just say uh, delete from users uh, where ID equals 70. So we're going to delete John at Gmail. And we're going to actually do that here. So I'll say, first of all, select star from posts. All right, so we've got all three posts. And I'm going to run another query, except I'm going to say delete from users where ID equals 17. So what is going to happen when we delete those users? Because we have posts that have relationships to them. Well, since we set the on delete to cascade, it should delete these posts automatically for us. So I'm going to leave this down here. So it's going to run another query so we can see exactly what our table looks like after we delete this user. And so if I run this, you can see that when I run a select star from posts, there's only one entry left. And that's the one with the user ID of 18, because it automatically deleted all of the posts created with an ID of 17.
All right. And so from a database perspective, uh, I think this is all we really need to cover for now. Uh, eventually, we'll start taking a look at joins, which is how to run these complex SQL commands that allow you to uh, jam the columns of multiple tables into one result uh, to make it a little bit easier to retrieve information. Because right now, if I if I try to get all of the posts, uh, you know, like send me every single post in my database, right? It's just going to give me the user ID. But if I need the information about the user, like what's the name of the user, what's the the username or the email, then I would have to individually query the uh, the IDs of these users. So I'd have to go then. I'd have to do you know a select. Whoops, make sure I don't delete anything. I'd have to do a select star from users where ID equals 18. And I have to do this one by one for every single post so that I can get this specific user. And so that's when we start to make use of things like joins. Um, but that's a little ahead of us at the moment. And that takes a little while to explain. So we're going to come back to that. Um, but before we actually kind of move on from this database side of things, because we pretty much covered everything, we're going to delete that column for now because we're going to make sure that SQL Alchemy actually sets up all of these constraints for us automatically so that we don't manually have to do it. So let's go to our properties, go to columns. We can just delete this column. And then I think this should automatically delete the foreign key. It does not delete the foreign key. So make sure you delete that as well. And then we can save that. And it looks like there's it's throwing an error. So let me cancel out of that. And I think we're going to have to do this in a two step process. So we'll say constraints we will delete the foreign key first. We'll save that and then properties we will delete the user ID. There we go. And so now if I do a select star from posts, right, there should no longer be a user ID column. So this put our database back into the state it was in before we started playing around with it. 